All right, well, thanks for joining us everybody tonight for our mentor series. Um, I am really happy to have Mr. O'Connor here a presentation tonight. So let's all give Mr. O'Connor a big RVA welcome. All right, thanks everyone. Now, I wasn't gonna let everyone get off the hook here without doing some math. So for those of you that uh, joined a little bit early, I shared <laughs> and I just got the, the paper and pencil out, I like it. Um, this is kind of a fun one just to get started. I thought, well, well, people were, were waiting. Um, did anyone get their answer? Did anyone do it? Yeah, Wallace X, what do you get? I got three. Hey, there we go. Kind of a fun one. Double it, add six, divide by two. So if you think of any number, um, subtract the number you started with, no matter what you picked, should be three. Kind of crazy, kind of a fun one. I shared this one with my math um, classes a few, three or four weeks ago, actually. Um, and it's kind of crazy. It was a fun one, um, especially with my seventh grade students to, you know, with like negative numbers, it works with negative numbers, decimals, fractions. Um, so it was kind of a fun one to to even, even do with those. And seventh grade, we were starting to learn with, you know, negative numbers, adding, subtracting, multiplying. Um, so it was kind of fun to do, so. All right, we'll get started. Um, so again, this session is, is really focused on math. So sites, tips, games, um, different ways um, to make math fun, um, some sites and, and ideas just to kind of support your students at home. Um, you know, a lot of students are doing live math classes or, you know, math you see, whatever your curriculum is. Um, and, and of course you have your core curriculum. These are ideas that are really meant to supplement that so like if you want extra practice or if you're you know stuck on a certain concept um, these are resources and ideas that that you can kind of just have a bank to go to um, that I've you know having taught math for a while now um, that I've gone to and, and have found really useful so that's the goal for for this one um, just so you guys know there is kind of a focus and when I get into my background my background is more that like upper elementary middle school um, so for a lot of the resources, that's kind of the focus age group, um, but a few of them, some of the things would really apply to, you know, any grade level, um, you know, they're for high school or younger grades. Um, so there are some things that would apply to, to those as well. All right, first, a little bit about myself quick, though, because I, I see a lot of familiar faces, students I have this year or students I had last year, which is awesome, um, but also a lot of new faces. Um, so just so you guys know, I'm uh, Mr. O'Connor, Alex O'Connor. Um, we live in DeForest, Wisconsin, which has anyone been to DeForest? If you have, you've probably driven by like the huge cow and the pink elephant, if you know what I'm talking about, <laughs> right off the, the main highway exit. Um, that's kind of what we're known for, I guess. I don't know. Um, but a little bit about myself. So I, I'm a big baseball fan. I play and have coached baseball the last nine years. Um, as far as coaching goes, um, kind of interesting. This is my first year I'm actually not going to coach. Um, you can see my family here. Mrs. O'Connor is an elementary teacher. Um, Finn is a little bit outdated here picture, but he's two and a half now. So he's uh, at the age where he's thinking he's he's in charge of everything. Um, and a lot of times he is. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I enjoy Wisconsin sports, um, cooking, board games, um, a little bit about myself. Uh, quick. Um, as far as my teaching experience, so um, like I said, I do have a math background. So I graduated from UW-Madison, um, degree in education and a minor in math. Um, and I, I spent my first seven years teaching uh, mostly sixth grade math in a brick and mortar classroom. Um, and then the last two years of that, I also had an eighth grade math class. Um, and then after those seven years, that's when I joined the RVA. And this is my third year with the RVA. Um, and I really I absolutely love it here. So I love the families, the staff, um, administration. It's just been an awesome, awesome um, place to be. All right, let's get into the math. So here we go. What's the plan? Um, so kind of the, the three main things I wanted to look at. Number one are, are useful math sites. So what are some sites that I've used having taught math um, at this level that, that I think you know, could be really useful? Um, again, to supplement, you know, whatever math your, um, your students 
um, using this year. Um, number two, useful math tips and resources. So just some different resources and tips, um, things to kind of are a little more creative, I guess, um, to maybe make things a little more interesting, um, where it's not just like a worksheet, you know, that you're doing to, to practice, which I know um, for some students that gets, you know, a little boring or they don't want to, you know, necessarily want to do that as a supplement, you know, those, I want to talk about some ways to, to maybe be a little more creative with, with the approach. Um, and then the last one, kind of going along with that, the third one, making math fun with games. Um, so I have some different games I want to show you um, that um, are, are pretty fun for students, but they also um, kind of reinforce some, some basic math skills as well. All right, and just so you guys know, feel free. Um, I am going to stick around after for a question and answer, um, but I'll kind of check the chat box too. So if things come up, you have questions, um, feel free to put stuff in there um, or save them for later. Um, I can um, kind of do both um, as we go here. So starting with the useful math sites. So number one, and a lot of you have maybe used this before. Um, if you haven't, Khan Academy. I mean, if there's one thing that you, you take away from this, um, if you're stuck on like a specific topic or your student is, um, you know, you're not, maybe you're not sure how to help your student if it's upper grades um, or, you know, your student's stuck and they, they want, you know, someone else explaining it, a video to help them. Khan Academy, I think by far, as far as I know, has the widest range of like tutorial videos um, for almost any range, any concept you could, you could think of. Um, so this, I said a lot of what I'm going to talk about applies to like that middle school, upper elementary. Khan Academy has honestly almost almost anything you could think of. So, you know, let's say you're stuck on, let's see, we just did like unit rates a few weeks ago. Um, you can go to Khan Academy and you can make an account too, or you can just um, search for videos and practice problems. And you can see like solving unit rates, you know, maybe that's what you're, you're kind of stuck on or your student is. Um, you can see there's different videos. And what's nice is once you click on one of those, um, not only do you get the video, um, along the left hand, it'll give like any related videos. Um, it gives practice problems they can do. So, you know, they could watch a couple videos on it and then try some practice problems and see if they're getting it. Um, and again, there is a huge, huge range of, of concepts. Um, and let me see if I'm not going to obviously show you the whole thing, but if you just want to see kind of what it looks like. Jada takes three hours to deliver 189 newspapers on her paper route. What is the rate per hour, the rate per hour at which she delivers the newspaper? So this first sentence tells us that she delivers or she takes three hours. Th All right. And again, I won't, I'm not going to make you watch the whole thing, but just so you get an idea, they're very... They're not the most exciting videos, I will say that. But again, they're very the content is awesome. Um, it's usually the sale that's that's going through him. He's very straightforward and and walks through the problem step by step. Um, you know, shows how to do it and explains it very well. Um, so so Khan Academy is a huge resource. Um, and again, you can sort by like grade level. I think they have like even like pre K all the way through high school or even college level. Um, or you can search by standard, by topic, like I did here. Um, so a ton, um, a ton of good resources on Khan Academy. Yeah, exactly. They have a, a ton on there as well. Um, so as far as, again, wide range of resources, that's a good one. Um, another good one, more specific to like that upper elementary or lower middle school is Math Antics. Um, I can show you this has a lot of good videos as well. Now you can see there's a sign up. I've never signed up. Um, he has a ton of free videos down here. And I'll say, I'll show you kind of the start of one here in a minute. They're a little more engaging, I'd say, a little cheesy. Some, I always warn my students. I'm like, there's always like one real cheesy part in the middle of it. So I just warn them and they usually think that's funny. Um, but they're a little more engaging, I think. So like we can, I don't know, like multi-digit subtraction. And you'll see a lot of them are that, like I said, that kind of elementary to middle school. Hi, and welcome to Math Antics. In this video, we're gonna learn how to do multi-digit subtraction. It's similar to doing multi-digit addition like we learned in our last video, but there's a few important differences. The main difference is with subtraction, 
the order of the problem matters. With addition, you can switch the order of the number. All right, so you get the idea. And again, there's usually like one real cheesy part where he's like dressed up in something that's kind of funny. So those, again, there's not quite as wide of a range as Khan Academy. Oops, I was trying to go back to here. Um, but there's a lot of, especially again, for that upper elementary, middle school, you can look through and you can see these are all free videos. So there's, you know, videos you can watch kind of tutorials on each of those concepts. Um, and again, these are a little more engaging maybe than the Khan Academy. Um, but if you're looking for like high school or like lower elementary, um, I don't think he has as, as much for those grades. And then finally, extra math. And I know a lot of you probably have, you know, you're aware of these, you've used these. Um, but if you're looking for just that basic fact practice, um, so I know a lot of had so many parents ask, you know, teaching math, you know, what can I do to help my students learn their basic, their basic uh, math facts, um, anything from addition, subtraction, multiplying, dividing. Um, yeah, so like, you know, nine times four, eight times three, eight times seven, just getting those facts down, um, which I know, you know, people have different views on how important that is. Um, but I will say, what, once students have those mastered, um, I think it does, it just helps speed things up for them. Um, you know, they're not caught up on a basic math math fact, you know, when they're trying to do a bigger problem. Um, so I think um, extra math is is a good tool to, to help with those. Um, and I can kind of show you what it looks like. So you can create an account. And I, you know, I've had a teacher account where I sign up students on that account, but I know you can do a parent account as well. And I don't know exactly what it looks like from the parent. I think it's kind of the same. You set up a parent account and you can have your, your child's account kind of within that. Um, and then you, it tracks, you know, kind of tracks their progress. Yeah, and like, yeah, like we see in the chat box, it's, it's pretty quick. It's not like they're spending an hour a day on this. Um, you know, it, it doesn't take long to do, but I think just the fact that they, if they're logging in every day and just doing it for a short time, um, it really helps, you know, kind of solidify those, those facts. All right, I'll take a, a quick break here be, before we go on to the next section. Are there any questions or, or things that I, I miss in or comments? Thanks to those of you kind of chiming in in the chat box as well as we go. Otherwise, um, what I wanted to look at next is, again, a little more creative way to, to approach math. So um, some useful tips and resources. I'll show you a couple of different things. Um, and just so you know, all of these are, are in the slides. So everything I'm clicking in here when, when we send the link, which I'll, I'll do here at the end, um, you'll be able to click on those and, and see exactly what I'm seeing. Um, and the first thing I wanted to provide is a lot, because I know long division is kind of a sticking point for a lot of students. You know, that can be one of those things that it takes a while to master um, if you're teaching the traditional approach. And this is a resource um, that I thought students could use. Um, it actually comes with two things. So what I think are most useful are the third and fourth um, page. And this is actually a free resource um, you can get as well, but obviously I'm providing it here. Um, and it gives kind of that example along the left-hand side of a problem. Because I think sometimes students, if, if they're learning that long division process, um, you know, they, they forget what to do next. They, they're, you know, they haven't quite mastered that yet. Um, so this kind of lays it out step by step. And what I like as well is it kind of gives in the, the text here kind of what they're thinking at each step. Um, so, you know, if they get stuck at a certain step, they can refer back to this. You could, you know, have it next to the problem they're doing. Um, and they can use that as a tool to kind of help remind them what they should be doing on their problem. Um, so that's, yeah, it's really visual. I just like how it's laid out. You know, you, you get the example along the left-hand side, nice and big. And then, you know, the text again is, is worded kind of, you know, like how you should be thinking about it um, as you go. So that's kind of nice. Um, and then it also has an anchor chart down at the bottom, which, you know, you could cut out and, and tape together or piece together. Um, to have have available as well. All right. I know you really do, and I know there's you know I'm I'm a supporter. I know there's there's like the partial quotients method. You know there's different ways to to divide, and I've always you know tried to teach different methods or whatever my students are you know mostly doing. 
Um, so I know not not everyone is teaching their students to long to divide using that that algorithm. But if you are using that traditional approach, um, I think this can be a, a useful tool. And then hands on long division. So this is, again, sticking with the, the long division. If, if you have students working on that, this was one I always did in my classroom. And I, I loved it. Students loved it. And again, this is just a, a creative way to not just, you know, throw a bunch of problems in, in front of your, your student, your child, and, you know, have them keep practicing the same thing. Um, but practicing using cards. I think I have a picture here. So kind of breaking it apart, it takes like two seconds, you can like cut out a little long division bar and some subtraction bars, you know, it takes like two seconds. Um, if you're doing decimals, dividing with decimals, you can throw those in there. Um, and then if you have a couple of decks of cards, just combine them together, obviously take out the face cards. Um, the one thing you'll need is zeros. So I would always just like tape a zero onto like the jacks or something. Um, so you have zeros. And then they can basically like flip over the cards and create their own problems to do. So like here we flipped, you know, we were doing decimals. Um, so we flipped the two, four and six over, put the decimal in, um, flip over, a, you know, you can decide, do you want it to be one digit, you know, that you're dividing by two digits. You can really kind of make it as difficult or simple as you want of a problem. Um, and then what I really like about this is it really slows them down. So especially if you have, you know, students who are making mistakes because they're like rushing through problems, um, here, once they have the problem, you know, they can't just get the answer, write it down quick. They have to go through and find that card to put in the right place um, and, and kind of go through the whole problem and, um, and complete it that way. Um, so that's kind of, again, just kind of a creative way, you know, trying to think of different ways as opposed to just giving worksheets or extra problems because that can get kind of um, monotonous for students. Um, so trying to find those different ways to do that. Yeah, it was fun. Like when I taught in brick and mortar, obviously virtually it's it's kind of tougher to do this one. I can't really do it as much anymore. <laughs> um, but when we did it in the classroom, students really got into it. So they, you know, they'd try to make problems tougher, put decimal points in different spots. Um, so it was kind of a fun way to to get them a little more engaged. All right. And then again, just kind of the tip of of being creative, trying to be creative and make things more fun. If you're, you know, if you're doing extra practice problems, like if your child's, you know, struggling with a certain concept. Um, like I said, trying to find ways to make it, you know, just a little different. Maybe the problem is random. You know, again, it's not just a, a worksheet. Um, another one I did that, you know, just to kind of give some ideas of that um, is we would create like, you know, multiplying mixed numbers or dividing mixed numbers. Now you'd have to buy, I bought the fraction dice. They're pretty cheap. You can get them on Amazon for not, not too expensive. Um, but you could like have them roll dice to create numbers. You know, students always love this one too. Um, so they'd roll like obviously the, the die and then the fraction die and put them together to create their mixed numbers. Um, and, and, you know, we could do this with multiplying, you know, dividing, adding, subtract. You could, you know, really tailor it to whatever um, specific topic you were doing. So I guess my, my tip there is, you know, just trying to make things a little more creative sometimes helps. Um, especially if your students, you know, kind of been working on the same thing for a while now, even a couple of years, you know, they've been working at, you know, multiplying fractions or um, long division or whatever the concept is. Um, sometimes just adding a little creative twist to it can can make things a little more interesting. All right. And finally, again, along with the, the creative side of things, you know, trying, I always, I try to make math, you know, more fun um, in class and I, you know, doing that at home, I think can help too. I wanted to provide a, a couple different games I've used. Um, I will say though, again, you know, I'm, I'm providing some different resources. If, you know, you at home have a specific concept um, that you're, you're working on, feel free to reach out to me, even if it's not a game that I've um, provided here, I might have something because I have a lot in that fifth to eighth grade range. Um, so definitely reach out. I can let you know if if I have something that I, that I think fits. If you're looking for that, um, I'd be happy to, to try to help. Um, these are two fun ones, though. Um, so the factor game. And there are printable versions of this as well. So this is fun. You can play against each other or, you know, with two players or you can play against the computer. Um, and again, I would always use in my 
brick and mortar classroom that we'd print it out and play it. Um, but this first one is called the factor game. And again, the link will be right in the slides. Um, and this is fun if, if your students learning factors um, or you know trying to identify factors of numbers. Um, the way it works is the first player picks a number. So like, let's say I pick 16 and then the other player, so you'll see the computer gets to cover up or color all of the factors of 16. So like eight times two, four times four, um, one times 16, but because I had 16 colored in, um, you know, they can't get that. And then the, the way it works is you get as many points as you have covered up. Um, so right now, like I'd have 16 points and they would have 10 plus four, they'd have 15. Um, so there's a lot of strategy involved. So as, as students play more, you know, they start to realize which numbers are good numbers to pick, um, which one prevents the other, you know, players from getting numbers. Um, and you can see the computer is picking 18 here. So then I would get all of the factors of 18. So I would get nine and two, but two is covered. Um, three and six. So three times six I would get. And I think that's it. When you think you're done, you click OK. And then it would be my turn to pick. And you, you go until there's, you know, no more numbers can be picked. Um, yeah, a, a great way for factor fluency. Um, and even it helps with those basic facts as well, you know, as your plan. Um, so that's a fun one. And again, there is a printable version where you can, you know, print out the game board and, um, you know, you just color in your, your numbers instead of using um, this version. So that's a fun one. Um, from the same site, there is a product game. And this is awesome for basic facts, too. Um, so I mentioned extra math being a resource. You know, that's pretty straightforward. Like it's just drilling them with facts. Um, this is more kind of a game version of doing that. Um, so here, what happens is along, you see the board here, along the bottom, you drag the numbers. So I, let's say I dragged to four, the computer is going to drag it. So they dragged it to three. So they did four times three and they get to cover up 12. And now it's my turn or our turn. So we get to pick either of these counters and drag it. So let's say I do seven times three, color in 21, then the computer goes. And the, it's kind of like bingo or connect four. The goal of the game is to get four in a row. Um, and there is, again, a ton of strategy in this one. It's actually really fun once you start playing with it. Because, um, you, you know, you're trying to go for four, but then you can try to block them. Um, if you get real advanced, you know, you get to a point where you can, like, trap the other person where they have to go and they're going to lose. Um, so it gets pretty fun when it, when it gets to the end. Um, but, again, a great way to practice, you know, just kind of a fun way to practice those basic facts. Um, can you pick the type of math? Are you for the product game? Are you asking like for this one? No, for this, it's pretty straightforward. I think, let me see, you can customize, I think the number. So you can maybe change the factors, but I think you can only go to nine possibly. Oh, maybe not. Maybe we could add a ton. Yeah, I'm not sure. I haven't explored um, switching it. This one is pretty specific with the product you know with you know finding the products of those numbers um, so you can maybe customize it slightly but it's not going to change really the the type of math for this one um, but i will say this this site the nctm which is the national council of um, teacher of mathematics they have some um, really cool free things some of it you have to subscribe to i think um, but i think they have some some pretty good free resources as well All right, and then a couple other games um, that I'll throw in here. Again, links are all in here. This is one that I actually made. So I said I love board games at the start in my little introduction. Equation Invasion. So if you have students um, that are, you know, want to practice solving equations. And the link here is just going to have you make a copy of it. Uh, so there's some instructions here. And this is the digital version. So, you know, you would pick, let's say you're playing with two people, you each get a game piece, you go to start. And then what you do is there's three pages of game cards. So you would just take turns kind of uncovering one of the cards. So like when it's your turn, you know, here's the equation, you would solve it. And there's an answer key to check it. So this is problem two. So you'd go down once you get your answer, you know, check your answer down here. And if you get it right, the card tells you how many places to go. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. You know, I use it in my classrooms. It's easy to teach. 
Um, and we played it a few times this year um, with my students as well. Um, so you would, you know, move ahead one. And then you can see there's some like random spots in there that that just add an element of luck in the game. So test your luck, you uncover um, one of these random cards and it either moves you forward or back. So it's, yeah, it's kind of a, you know, you want to land on them, but do you really like it might, it might push you back. It might push you forward. Um, so there's that one. And then there's this, this is the best space, the switch it up space. So it, you, if you land on that, you have to switch spaces with another player. Um, so if someone's ahead of you, that's a good thing, but the best is when the person that's like out in front lands on it and then they have to like switch with someone that's behind them. Um, so again, just kind of a fun way to switch it up, you know, instead of just doing a bunch of equation problems, um, you know, it just adds a, a little element of fun and, and competition in there as well. All right, so that's our equation invasion. I think I have a couple more here. Oh, multiplication, multiplication bingo for any bingo fans. This is another basic facts bingo game. So I made this one. If you're looking to practice basic facts, now you can see I use this in uh, my classroom where I have like 30 boards. So you could get a game of like 30 going at your house if you want, but <laughs> you probably won't need that many. Uh, but you each pick a game board. Um, you could cut out the the basic fact cards um, and you'd have to have someone like reading them off. Um, they do have the answers on there. Um, and then obviously if, you know, it's just played like bingo, if you have the number, you cover it up and you're, you're trying to get five in a row. Um, so that's another option for, for practicing those basic facts. And I think the last one is connect four. So, and I have a bunch of these. So again, if you, have, you know, if your students aren't working on dividing fractions, if it's a different concept, if it's something in eighth grade or fifth grade, sixth, again, that, that fifth to eighth grade range, um, definitely reach out, let me know. I'll let you know if I have anything or not. Um, I'd be happy to share those. Um, I've made a lot of different games and things for that. Um, so these are Connect Four games. So kind of like bingo. And so with these, um, so kind of similar, this is the digital copy. So you'd have to, you know, um, you'd each pick a game board. So there's different colored game boards here. Um, I actually just played this today, not the dividing fractions, but a connect four game with um, some of my sixth graders today. Um, so they would take turns again, uncovering a problem. Uh, they complete the problem. I usually have them do it together for this one. Um, so like they each do the problem that you get your answer, you kind of agree on it. Um, and then everyone has that answer on their game board somewhere. So you would cover up whatever answer you get. And the first player to get four in a row, um, either diagonal, horizontal, or vertical, um, is the winner for, for the game. Um, so again, that's kind of a fun one. If your students like a little competition thrown in there, um, just to, to switch things up a little bit, um, that can be a fun way to, to practice as well. All right, so I know I kind of like flew through yeah i'm glad miley liked it we yeah today and we had done some like class like teacher versus class um in, in our live classes but yesterday was the first time we broke into like breakout rooms in zoom and did it um and it was pretty fun um uh for students to to give a try we were doing like dividing whole numbers so if if you need if you want that one let me know um i'd, I'd be happy to send it your way all right so i know i i kind of flew through a bunch of things there so I know I went kind of fast. Um, let me get the link to, yeah, so Tracy put the link to the attendance in there. If you haven't filled that out, um, you'll want to do that. And then let me also fill or get the link to the slides here because that has all of the links to different resources and sites um, in there. And so feel free, everything that was underlined that I clicked on there um, should have the link working where you guys um, can do that as well. Um, and again, like I said, please reach out. If you have other, you know, other concepts, I didn't cover something you're working on in that upper elementary to middle school range, um, definitely send me an email. Um, let me know. And I, again, I'll just let you know if I, if I have something, I'll send it your way. Um, if, if I don't, I can kind of look and, and see if I can find anything that would help. Yeah, that's a good question. Any thoughts on spiral versus mastery approach to curriculum? 
Um, yeah, I don't know. I personally, I've, I've always kind of liked having a little bit of spiral review in there. Um, so, you know, it, it doesn't have to be a ton, but just so that, you know, students are, are seeing things come up again. Um, so I got, I, I'd lean a little bit towards that, but obviously you want students mastering concepts as well. Um, and I see Mr. Dewey here. He could, he's a math guy. He could jump in there as well. If, if you have any thoughts on that. Um, but yeah, I would, I would lean towards at least incorporating some sort of review, you know, of, of concepts. So students don't, don't go too far, um, or too long without seeing something. I would add Alex, uh, you know, looking ahead to see what the objective is, uh, then maybe prefacing any of the lessons with some of those topics that they know kind of build their confidence coming into it, you know? Uh, so if that's a spiral or a mastery thing, but just building confidence is a big thing. And, you know, attempting the new problems, just getting them into that perseverance factor of the problem solving, because so much of it is not even about the math, but yep. about the process of perseverance and, and solving problems. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I, I love that idea that you mentioned of like kind of prefacing the next unit with maybe some, you know, more basic problems that are going to help them. Um, you know, where they're not getting caught up, they've kind of seen it a little bit, or they, you know, they kind of have a, a head start on that. Um, I think that's an awesome, awesome idea. Yeah, so again, that's, that's all I have for a presentation. I'll stick around as long as you guys have questions. Um, you know, feel free to stick around and, and I'll, I'll stay as long as you guys want to, to try to answer those.